Hi, I'm James. And I'm Laurent. And today we are in beautiful Milwaukee. Because Milwaukee is only an hour and a half from Chicago, we love coming here for weekend getaways. There is so much to do in Milwaukee, from museums to breweries to cool neighborhoods and also a great lakefront. We think Milwaukee is a completely underrated city, and in this video we'll be sharing our favorite 10 places to visit in Milwaukee. So let's go! Number one on our list has to be the Milwaukee Art Museum. It is a premier museum and both the building itself and the art collection inside the building are spectacular. The museum is located right on the lakefront in downtown Milwaukee. The main pavilion was designed by Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava. He is one of our favorite architects. Since then, Calatrava also designed the Oculus at the World Trade Center in New York. And there are many similarities between the two buildings, such as the white cathedral ceiling and the Star Trek looking beams. But the Milwaukee Art Museum has something that the Oculus doesn't have, the sun shading Brise Soleil that opens during the day and closes at night. When it's open, it looks like two giant wings with a wingspan of more than 200 feet. It makes the building even more spectacular than it already is. Inside the museum, the collection contains 25,000 pieces of art. It goes from Renaissance Dutch paintings all the way to contemporary art. With a great impressionist collection that includes work by Monet and Caibat. Given how extensive the art collection is, there will be something for everybody at the Milwaukee Art Museum. And number two on our list is the Harley Davidson Museum. It's another museum, but completely different from the art museum. Harley-Davidson is one of the iconic brands of Milwaukee, and the museum features both bikes and Harley-Davidson memorabilia. And the big question is, will you enjoy the Harley-Davidson Museum even if you're not a biker? And the big answer is absolutely. Yeah. Neither of us are bikers, and we still had a great time visiting the museum. Harley-Davidson was founded more than 100 years ago, and they kept one of every single model that was ever built. The early models were fascinating to me. They basically looked like glorified bicycles. <laughs> but over the course of the 20th century, models evolved towards the Harleys we know today. Another great section was the one about racing. Back in the days, bike racing was done on wooden tracks. The wood would quickly deteriorate, and the track would also become slippery with all the oil spills. Riders even died on these things. It was really dangerous. What also looked dangerous were the hill climb competitions. This hill looked so steep, it must have been crazy. Yeah. Another great section was the one about customized bikes. Bikers go crazy with their Harleys, and there were some pretty funky bikes out there. As well as some famous bikes, like the ones from Terminator 2 or Elvis's bike. It was such an awesome museum. We highly recommend it. And number three on our list is touring a brewery. Milwaukee is a big German town and beer is part of the city's DNA. There are lots of breweries to visit in Milwaukee. Some of them are small microbreweries, but you can also visit the huge Miller Brewery. The visit of the Miller Valley plant is very well organized with signs of all the manufacturing steps. And we also like the historic aspect of the visit with the Gettleman House that dates back to the mid 1800s and the Bavarian style Miller Inn. There's a lot of different types of tours, and even if you're not into beer, there will be something for you to enjoy. Some of the tours focus on the brewing process, and others focus more on beer tasting. Me personally, I'm not a big beer drinker, but I like technical stuff, and I really enjoy seeing all the burners and the chillers and the tanks. Another great option is to visit a distillery. We visited the Great Lakes Distillery, which is two minutes away from the Harley-Davidson Museum. And the tour combines both the manufacturing process and liquor tasting at the end of the tour. It was great. It was good. And number four on our list is the Riverwalk. Just like the Chicago River runs through Chicago, the Milwaukee River runs through Milwaukee. And in 1993, the city of Milwaukee decided to completely redevelop its riverfront. And as its name indicates, the Riverwalk is a pedestrian walkway that runs along the river. It starts from the Pierhead Lighthouse on Lake Michigan and goes through the entire downtown area, including the historic Third Ward. Once completed, the Riverwalk will be three miles long, Along the path, you will walk past lots of bars and restaurants with sculptures and street art. Including the Bronze Fawns, one of Milwaukee's icons from the <laughs> 70 sitcom Happy Days. The statue is life-size, and he was actually much shorter than we thought. On summer nights and weekends, the Riverwalk is super lively and it's a great way to discover the city.
And number five on our list is the public market. The public market is a building right in the historic Third Ward, which is kind of like the Soho of Milwaukee. And it hosts all kinds of restaurants and specialty food stores. It's a great place to hang out, especially if it's raining or cold outside. You can easily walk from downtown. Or you can take the light rail, which stops in front of the market. All of the stores are small local businesses, and a lot of them offer artisan or ethnic food. You can find artisan cheese, deli meats, fish, spices. And our favorite was an olive oil store. But even if you're not going to buy anything, the public market is a great place to visit. And number six on our list is exploring the Milwaukee neighborhoods. Milwaukee went through a population boom at the end of the 1800s, and a lot of the buildings from that era have been preserved. And because Milwaukee is a walkable city, we love just strolling around and enjoying the architecture. The core downtown has a lot of Romanesque revival buildings, such as the Federal Building or the Pfister Hotel. We also like the Second Empire style Mitchell Building and many others. But if you really want to experience Milwaukee's German influence, you have to walk north along the Riverwalk to Old World 3rd Street. This is where you will find several German bars and restaurants, including the famous Mater's. And just south of downtown is the historic Third Ward, where the public market is. As we mentioned before, the Third Ward is like the Soho of Milwaukee. It is home to plenty of bars and restaurants, and also plenty of cool stores and art galleries. It's a great place to wander around with no particular goal in mind. And just north of downtown are the Lower East Side, Murray Hill, and the Upper East Side. It's a little bit too far to walk, but you can easily get there with a light rail. We especially like looking at all the houses along the lakefront. And although it's gentrified a lot, it still has a cool vibe. And number seven on our list is the Basilica of St. Josephette. When we travel to Europe, in France or in Spain or in Italy, visiting churches and cathedrals is always a big part of our trip. But in the US, it's rarely the case because churches tend to be smaller and newer. And to be honest, they're just not as nice as in Europe. St. Josephette happens to be a beautiful church and it's right here in the Lincoln Village neighborhood of Milwaukee. St. Josephette was modeled after St. Peter's in Rome. And even though it's smaller than St. Peter's, it's still a massive church the biggest in Milwaukee. Like St. Peter's in Rome, St. Josephat has a huge dome in the center that's more than 200 foot tall. But what's most impressive about St. Josephat is that there isn't a single square inch that is not painted. Throughout the whole church, there are motifs and sculptures and stained glass windows. And even though there's a lot going on in the design, it doesn't feel overwhelming. We went on top of the bell tower and from there you have a beautiful view of the city with the skyline in the background. And number eight on our list is the lakefront. Milwaukee is on the shore of Lake Michigan and the entire lakefront between the lake and downtown is made of parks and beaches. And the best way to explore the lakefront is to rent a bike. Or to just walk through one of the many parks. When you think of Milwaukee, you don't necessarily think of a beach resort. But Milwaukee has several beaches in the city proper, such as McKinley Beach or Bradford Beach on the north side of the city. One of the fun things to do at the end of Bradford Beach is to visit the North Point Lighthouse. The lighthouse is 150 feet high, and if you climb the 84 steps to the top, you'll have one of the best views of downtown in Lake Michigan. The lighthouse is also a maritime museum that is great for kids. And number nine on our list is the Paps Mansion. You're never far from beer in Milwaukee. The Paps Mansion is a large house that was built in 1892 by Frederick Paps, the founder of the Paps Brewing Company. But the Paps family only lived in the mansion for 16 years. It then belonged to the Archdiocese of Milwaukee for the next 70 years. And in the 70s, it was added to the National Register of Historic Places, was bought by a conservation group, and is now open to the public for daily tours. The Paps Mansion was built in a Flemish Renaissance revival style. And to be honest, it's not our favorite type of architecture. But it's still a beautiful building with lots of intricate details and sculptures. And what's really interesting about the visit is that it takes you back to the life of the rich people of the late 19th century. And you can see both the owner's quarters and the servant's quarters. It's got a little bit of a Downton Abbey feel to it. 
And 10th on our list is the Milwaukee County Zoo. Whether the zoo should be higher or lower on your list really depends on what you're looking for. If you're from a small town in Wisconsin and you're looking for things to do with your family while visiting the big city, then you should absolutely visit the Milwaukee County Zoo. But if you're from out of state and you've already seen bigger zoos like in San Diego or Brookfield, and you're looking for things that are truly unique to Milwaukee, then the Milwaukee County Zoo won't have anything that you haven't already seen elsewhere. The zoo is huge and has separate sections for each types of animal. Bears, giraffes, elephants, and our favorites are the otters. And the penguins. They were so much fun to watch. But there's a lot more to do at the zoo than just watching the animals. One of the big activities is to ride the safari train that goes all around the zoo. Or ride the chairlift. I've never seen a chairlift in a zoo before. Me neither. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. And put your comments in the comment section below. And if you want to subscribe to our channel, we're going to put a link right here. Be sure to click the bell if you want to get notifications about our latest videos. And if you want to watch our other videos, we're going to put one right here and another one right there. Bye. Bye.